welcome back. Welcome back, man, to another episode of the Where's the Pan podcast. Hey, baby, this is like what episode? Ah, damn, bro, I lost track. I ain't gonna lie. I've been going for like three months, maybe four months, maybe five months. I don't even know. I've been going for some time off the podcast, and y'all, that's been my fault. You feel me? Like, literally, God has called me to do this podcast, and like, it's like when God call you to do something, but it's not the plans you have for yourself, it's like it'd be hard to even do what God say do when literally this is exactly what he wants you at. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I've been feeling like I haven't been in the place where I want to be at, but I also haven't been in the place where God's want me at. You feel me? Like, that, that's just something that I've just been thinking about lately, man. Like, I literally just have to sit and pray and like, look, Lord, like, I want to go back to the podcast, but it be hard. It be, it been hard, okay? I've been doing everything else, but what you called me to do, it, it, it's been a struggle. But how y'all been, man? How y'all doing mentally? How y'all doing spiritually, emotionally? How y'all doing? You know what I'm saying? How y'all doing? Uh, but I have been on social media. I haven't been on a podcast, but I've been on like, you know, TikTok. Instagram, like I've been on those, but I have not been like on the podcast at all. But look, I got a lot of things to talk about today, man. So without further ado, we finna go ahead and get into it, man. I don't even want to, I ain't want to talk too much. You feel? I don't want to talk too much. So the first thing I want to talk about is fitting in. You know what I'm saying? Now, I decided to talk about fitting in because I realized in this generation, a lot of younger people, a lot of young brothers, a lot of young sisters, they try to fit in with the people around them. But we got to realize that as not even as not even as followers of Christ, because I know not everybody is a follower of Christ, but if you are a follower of Christ, as followers of Christ, we are not called to fit in with the world. You know what I'm saying? We are called to stand out. We want to be in a certain group of, we want to be able to be in a group of people and people see our light shine. You feel me? Because we was called to, uh, to stand out from that group of people. So I don't want to just focus on a followers of Christ, but I want to focus on in general, bro. A lot of people, they try to fit in, which Fitting in ain't gonna get you nowhere, bro. Don't friends and don't don't friends that you call your friends at school and don't think don't people that you call I said things. <laughs> don't people that you that you hang out with you and consider your best friends, your this, your that. Bro, not everybody your friend. That's why I had to learn, like, getting out of high school and then in high school, I try to fit in a lot, man. High school, I was I was that person that just always wanted to fit in, always wanted to be the cool kid, always wanted the attention. I was the attention seeker, bro, but I after high school, you no, know, once COVID hit, dog, I didn't have no friends. I didn't have no friends. And it's sad to say that because it's like, I thought those was my guys. I thought those were my my brothers, my day ones. You know, we went to we went we went to middle school together and went to high school together, graduated together. I thought those were my brothers. But then it's like they didn't do no fake phony stuff. It's just a simple fact that I realized that I wasn't called to fit in. I realized that because I they always call me lame, always call me goofy. It's like they always call me these type of names, but I didn't look of it. I think I thought we was just being funny. I thought we was playing games. I'm like, ah, you're a goofy too. Ah. But the whole time, I'm the real goofy. So that was kind of, you know, that was kind of bogus the way they, they played me. You know what I'm saying? But I just want to, like, motivate somebody out there that's trying to fit in with other people and tell them, like, bro, there's no need to fit in. There's no need to fit in. God called you to a higher standard, bro. You got a higher calling, bro. You don't got time to be fitting in with the world. You ain't got time to be fitting in with these friends. Y'all, y'all young people, y'all go outside, y'all party, y'all do this, y'all do that. I ain't saying there's nothing, it's nothing wrong with having fun. But it I had to learn this recently. You know what I'm saying? If my bank account and where I wanted to be at, I don't have time to be going out with going out with so-called friends, going out partying and doing this and doing that. I ain't got time for none of that. Because if, if if I'm not where I want to be at in life right now, and if I'm not even where God want me at right now in life, what do I look like going outside trying to have fun and fit in with the people around me that's not really my friends because they don't even have the same values and morals that I have? You feel me? And a lot of y'all, y'all go out, y'all party every weekend, but then y'all wonder why y'all so, y'all wonder why y'all not happy. Y'all wonder why y'all not none of this. Y'all wonder why y'all can't find peace. The reason why y'all can't find peace is because y'all looking for peace in the wrong areas. Y'all looking for peace in y'all friends. Y'all looking for peace in y'all family. Y'all looking for peace in, in relationships. The only person you can find true peace in is Jesus Christ. That's the only person. And I preach the word and I preach the gospel to tell people like, bro, this is the real. This is real. That's the only way you can find true peace. Keep on, keep on looking for peace in relationships. You'll never find it. Keep on looking for peace in, and y'all can say all day long, oh, this, this dude, he saved me. He brought peace into my life. This girl saved me. She brought peace. In. Bro, they didn't bring no peace into your life. They didn't bring no peace into your life. 
Remember that. The only person you could really find peace in is Jesus Christ. So keep on looking for the peace where y'all been looking for peace at. Y'all truly never going to be happy. Y'all going to wonder why y'all never happy. People in this generation and people in this world is never happy because they're not following what God has for them. You know, we we want to go our own way. We feel like we 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 feel like we just this smart people. We feel like we just we can do what we want to do, which is true. We got free will. But at the end of the day, you have to follow exactly where God wants you to go. Because he knows your he he knows everything before it happens. So if you out here living for the world, if you out here doing what you want to do, you know, you going your own way, you 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 going to this job. But God never called you to that job, but you go to that job because they pay more money. Let me tell you something. God's not going to call you to a place that always pay the, more, the most money. Sometimes God wants to humble you. Sometimes you need to be humble because if you got a million dollars right now, you'll be flexing on the whole world right now. If you got a hundred K right now, which is not a lot, but if you got a hundred K, you'll be flexing. And the reason I say a hundred K is not a lot because the way y'all be spending money today's age, boy, that's not a lot. <laughs> That's not y'all be buying. Y'all go buy y'all a hundred thousand dollar jewelry, but y'all only got a hundred thousand dollars. So you just spent your whole hundred k on a on a chain, on a chain that ain't nobody don't nobody care about. So that's what I'm trying to tell y'all, man. It's no it's no need to fit in with the crowd. There's no need to fit in, bro. Stand out. Y'all want to be y'all say, oh, I'm different. I'm different. That's y'all favorite word. Y'all get in a relationship. Oh, what you like about oh, oh, you just different. How's she different? How is he different? How, how is he different from anybody else you done mess with? Y'all be messing with the same people, but with different faces. AKA my boy Mike Ty said that, you know what I'm saying? But it's, it's the real talk. Y'all be messing with the same people, but with a different face. So how is they different? How is he different from anybody else in this world? He smokes. He drinks. He party. He do everything that everybody else do in the world. You know what? You know how you know a person different? It's when they devote themselves to Jesus Christ. It's when they get a whole life to Jesus Christ. It's when they devote it into their word. It's when they follow in Christ at 19 in a world full of hate, evil, everything. When they when they doing that, that's how you know, oh, he different. When they when they when they young, you want to get married at a young age and I say, "Man, I ain't I ain't trying to settle down right now." Just, that's how you know they different. They not different. They not different if, 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 if they doing everything that everybody else do. That's not being different. That's fitting in. That's just want to be, that's just want to do what everybody. They dress, bro. Everybody in, this everybody in this generation dress the same. What happened to the young brothers wearing suits? What happened to the young brothers wearing turtlenecks and, you know, looking somewhere, somewhere efficient, somewhere like, you know what I'm saying? Looking a little, 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 uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, professional. You know what I'm saying? What happened to that? We got all these young brothers sagging pants. That's not being different. Everybody sagged their pants. We got all these young brothers wearing the ski mask. That's not different. Why do you want to portray that image? And look, I it's, it's crazy because I'm saying this when I got a whole thing of ski masks in my closet. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Like, I wasn't perfect. And I was wearing those ski masks because everybody else was wearing them. But now that, you know, now that I, I don't wear them no more. Okay, they've been they in my closet. I haven't worn those in a minute. They just sitting in my closet. You feel me? Uh, but I'm just saying, I was one of those people, and I realized that this is not what I want to be. I don't want to portray this image. Y'all wonder why y'all black brothers get looked at the way y'all get looked at, because look at the image y'all trying to portray. Who y'all trying to impress? Y'all want to be y'all favorite rapper, Polo G, Lil Durk, G Herbo. Y'all want to be these favorite rappers. These favorite rappers ain't even looking at y'all. So how y'all want to be some? That's not, how y'all want to be somebody that's not showing y'all the attention back? Y'all giving these dudes all the attention in the world. All the attention in the world, but can't give y'all so-called friends a shout out. Can't give y'all so-called friends the attention y'all giving big rappers and artists. Come on, man. Y'all got to really do better, bro. Y'all got to really do better. All this fin and stuff, bro, this ain't even, this not even cool no more. We in the year 2022, bro. I ain't trying to fit in. I'm trying to stand out. I want people to look at me as a young brother. I don't want people to look at me like I'm a game banger, a thug. I may got tattoos. Yes, I'm tatted up. I got nine tattoos, ten tattoos, nine tattoos. I don't know. I haven't had a new tattoo in almost what? It's going on probably two years now. I don't know. Or a year. I don't know. But I haven't got a new tattoo since. Why? Because there's no point of inking up my body trying to look different. I literally got tattoos just so women can look at me like, oh, he cute. He did. But I didn't realize that God was going to send me my wife at 19 
And I didn't even have to be focused. I didn't have to focus on the women that's around her. I didn't have to focus on everybody else because I'm already looking at my wife. And she accepted me for who I am without the tattoos. But I didn't see that. You see what I'm trying to say? Come on, man. We we all have to do better, bro. But yes, I, I definitely I'm glad I like hit on that fitting in because I feel like this this the, the fitting in can like help somebody. It can help somebody. I don't know who can help, but it can help somebody, bro. It can help somebody. Now let me let me go ahead and uh change tra tra let me go ahead and transition. You know what I'm saying? Let me go ahead and transition over to 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 um I want to talk about uh your purpose in life. You know, when God called you to do something, when God calls you to do something, I want to get on that topic. The reason why I want to talk about this is simply because I believe that God called everybody to do something. If God calls you to do something, you need to go ahead and do it. Stop procrastinating. Stop holding back. I was holding back on this podcast, but there's no point in me holding back when God called me to do this. Because guess what? This right here is exactly where God wants me at. This is this is exactly where he want me at. I'm not where I want to be at and not even think about it. I was never where God wanted me to at. I, I was doing my own. I was taking my own steps. I was walking my own path. But let me tell you something. When you when you rush into when you rush into life and do things on your own and walk your own path, that's when all hell starts breaking loose. That's when everything starts tearing apart. Everything. That's when your life starts to come and come and crumbles. And you realizing like, damn, bro, what? Why is my life like this? Your life like this because you didn't follow what God had for you. You didn't follow what God had for you. How you know what God got for you is when you pray about something and it's just on your spirit. It stays on your spirit. It's deep inside you. But first thing first, I will always tell anybody that want to know their purpose in life. Give your life to Christ. Give your life to Christ first. Accept him into your heart. Accept the Holy Spirit. Accept the full bundle. Accept it all in. Once you accept it and truly believe it and have faith, repent from your sins. Repent don't mean just say repent. That, that's what y'all feel to realize. Repent don't mean just say repent. I repent. Anybody can say I repent. No, repent means change. Change yourself. Change around. Change. You got to do a whole 360. You were smoking weed probably six months ago. You know what I'm saying? Or, or you let's say, okay, you was probably smoking weed yesterday. You just had sex yesterday. You just bully or talked about somebody or did gospel or whatever. You just did all that yesterday. You repent today and actually do a turnaround. You may not change overnight. But as long as you progressing in life and you and, and you go see yourself, you're like, dang, like, I haven't did this in like six months. I haven't did this in like a year. I haven't did this in almost two years. Oh my gosh. Don't it, it ain't you. It ain't you because if we try to change ourselves on our own. It's going to be hard. It's going to be truly hard. We got to just accept Jesus Christ into our life. You know what I'm saying? And allow him to change us from the inside out. That's the true healing. That's who's truly changing you. But you got to do that first step and just accept them. You know what I'm saying? That's how you find your purpose in life. I'm telling you, this is just the facts. This is how you find your purpose in life. So, so when, you, when you truly find your purpose in life, don't run away from what God called you to do. Even if it's not what you want to do, just believe. As long as it's what God wants me to do, I got it. I got it. He ain't going to leave me down. He ain't going to leave me or forsake me. Just know I got it. This is what God called me. I got it. I'm telling y'all, bro. This is the truth. This is the truth. You feel me? And then when the devil try to creep in and tell you this ain't what God called you to do, when the devil try to keep creep in and tell you all this, all this stuff that doesn't even make sense, you got to instantly pray, 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 pray without ceasing. You got to pray, pray, pray each and every day. Oh, that's bars. I wasn't trying to, I wasn't even trying to rhyme. You got to pray, pray, pray each and every day. Da, da, da. Oh, well, I'm killing it. Hey, that was straight bars. I, I, look, I should have been a rapper low key. You know I, mean? I I I should have been a rapper, but you know what I'm saying? God didn't call me to be a rapper. And I'm glad he didn't because I can't rap, I can't sing. That is not my talents. I try to sing, y'all might click off the video. Okay. But that that's the truth. Like all jokes aside though, that's the truth though. You you truly when you find your purpose, man, you go know. You go know when you find your purpose, but you gotta allow God to guide your steps. One thing I realized is that I jumped out into doing things my own way in life, and I realized that I suffered the consequences later. 
I didn't suffer them right then and there. But then I realized, I'm like, damn, bro, this is probably what this is probably what God did not call me to do. But relationships. I jumped into this relationship, that relationship, this relationship, and all hell broke loose. That relationship was not for me. God didn't call me to be in that specific relation. He didn't call me to be in that. Half of the people that we're with today, half of the people y'all with today, God didn't even call y'all to meet them. But some of us, we walk into our own ways. We walk into our own will. And then all hell start breaks loose. That's why when we get into a relationship and we didn't pray about it, but don't worry. I, I got into my relationship and I didn't pray about it. But then I start praying. And you, you have to start praying and asking God, Lord, please show this person true attentions. Is this the person I'm supposed to be with? Please reveal to, please reveal to me this person true intentions. Please. Please let me know, Father God, is this the person I'm supposed to be with? Is this the person that you have destined, destined me to be with? Is this the person? You have, to, you have to literally get down and pray about that. You have to get down and pray and ask, and ask God, is this the person? It's the truth, man. But uh, look, I want to, one more thing, one more thing, y'all. One more thing. I Look, I, I hope that a lot of y'all are getting something out of this. I really do. Uh, because this, this is, this is something that just been on my chest, been on my heart lately. You feel me? Uh, but I want to go ahead and also say this. You can't, when you hop into relationships, you can't want a person to act a certain way when you're not even acting that way yourself. How you going to want a person to have money when you broke? How you going to want a person to be devoted to God when you not even doing that same thing? How you going to want... To ch First of all, how y'all gonna want to change a person when you hop into a clean relationship with this person? How you gonna want to change a person? You can't change nobody. If you want to change somebody, you have to change yourself. And guess what? It's hard to change ourselves by ourselves. You see what I said? It, look, it's hard to change ourselves by ourselves. We need the help of the Holy Spirit. We need Jesus Christ to help us change fully, to give us that pure heart, to change us from the inside out. But my thing is, how y'all gonna hop into a relationship and y'all try to change that person? Because at the end of the day, last time I checked, you can't change nobody. You can't change nobody. I thought that was that's God job. I, don't, I, I me personally, I never, I never could change nobody. We have our standards. We be having our standards so high when we get into a relationship for with a person. We want them to be this, and we want them to do this, and we want them to be that. But what if God, what if God plans was different from what you had? What if God plans was for you? You want a, you want a tall, chocolate, six-pack, football player, low-cut, waves, earrings, nose piercing, looking all. You feel me? You want him to be chocolate, but God gave you a Hispanic. God gave you a Hispanic that 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 was devoted to his word. He probably he, he was a little, he probably didn't have a little six-pack, but his body looked nice. He had he had the he had the waves. Them, them thick ways they be having, you feel? Them things be nice, but I ain't gonna lie. Boy, I love, bro, the, the, the Hispanic ways. Boy, I, I wish my hair was like that, bro. That, them, ooh, them things be cheat, cheat, cheat. You feel me? Be having like three waves, three little bitty ways, but those things be hard. I ain't gonna lie. But my thing is, what if God planned with this, but your plan with this? So you try to, so you found a guy, or you tried to find a guy that was like this, but then God sent you this Hispanic. And you and you threw him off because this ain't what you wanted. Now you just messed up. I would say, like, I don't want to say you messed up God's plan, but in a way you did. You see what I'm saying? Look, my point that I'm trying to make is that when we go through our life, we can make our own plans, but God's plan will prevail in our life. That's a Bible scripture. We can do what we want to do in this life. But if it ain't aligning with God's plan, you ain't going to last too long doing something that you called your own self to do. And then it's like y'all get y'all be having these high standards for people and y'all be wanting this and y'all be wanting that. But then, like I said, you, you're not even living that way yourself. Before you want somebody to be this and before you want somebody to do that, make sure you live in that way yourself. Make sure you're doing that yourself. So if you want a person that's devoted to their word, make sure you being devoted to your word. You want a person with money, make sure you have a little bit of bread on your, you know, you know what I'm saying? Make sure you have a little bit of something, something. You feel me? Y'all be tripping me out when y'all be wanting to go 
with what y'all want, but not what God want. And the crazy thing about it, people say there is no God, but my thing is, how can you truly say there is no God? Look at the skies. Look at the trees. I don't know who can build a sky. I don't know who can build this entire world. I, I don't know who. Who? Let me know. If there's no God, then how? How is there all this? How is there all this creation? How? If there's no God. It's a Bible verse. Uh, I'm going to put it right here on the screen. It's a Bible verse that say like, ah, I forgot it. Ah! I hate when I forget my Bible verses, man. Um, it's like, I'm going to put it. It says something about if, if a person don't believe in God with the heavens and the earth. Something like that. It's something like that. I hate when I forget my Bible verses, man. I should have wrote it down before. But I didn't. This like, like I said, when I do podcasts, this stuff be off the dome, bro. I don't have no notes or nothing in front of me. This stuff just be coming off the head. You feel me? I just be allowing the spirit to lead me. Uh, because at the end of the day, you know, I, I could write down notes, but... To be honest, I don't want it to feel like I'm just forcing myself to read. I want to have a genuine conversation as if y'all here. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, you 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 can't say there is no God. You can't say. Once you experience God, you go know like, okay, there is a God. But in order to experience a, uh, in order to experience God, you have to allow your you have to just loosen up your heart just a little bit. Some of y'all be so hard hearted. Y'all be so hard hearted. Y'all actually gotta loosen up a little bit. And accept the truth into your heart. We try everything else on this earth, but we can't try the one person who can give us all things, who can give us peace, who can give us hope, who can give us happiness. We 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 can't trust in that. But we can listen, we can listen to everything else, but we can't listen to a sermon. We can't listen to the Bible app. Like, even, even if you listening to it or reading it, it's the same thing. But I'm just saying, we can do all these things. But we can't give the one person time. We can give everything else in our lifetime. We can do this for this amount of hours. We can watch this for this amount of hours. But we can't give God at least five minutes out of our day. Let me ask y'all something. Real talk. Each and every day we fall short of the glory of God. That's a Bible verse too. I think that's, a, I believe that's in Romans. We all fall short of the glory of God. And I made a video like this on TikTok. But my thing is, we all can fall short of the glory of God, correct? Okay. But when you, when you, don't y'all get tired when y'all repent over and over again of the same sin? Y'all fall short into the same sin. Then y'all repent. Then y'all do it the same sin again. And then y'all repent. Don't y'all get tired of that? Because I feel like doing that is like cheating on your wife or cheating on your husband and keep coming back saying, I'm sorry, baby. I'm sorry, baby. Forgive me. Forgive me, baby. I can hit the Chris Brown on you. Forgive me, baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm so sorry. Like, like, bro, all that, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I'm saying. I feel like it's like that. But you got to sit and ask yourself in the mirror. Just talk to yourself in the mirror. And just look at yourself. How serious do you take God? How serious do you take God? Because if you take God serious enough, you won't keep falling short. You keep making the same sin that you struggle with. You won't keep making this a making this a repeated cycle. You won't make this a lifestyle. Repentance is changing. And look, I had to learn this earlier. Shout out to my cousin Dre. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you're watching this now, but shout out to my boy Dre. Because he he had to correct me and he had to show me like, bro, how serious do you take God? You doing this, you doing that. How serious do you take? You pre you preaching this, but you practicing this. How serious do you take God? And that stuck with me ever since he said that because I had to truly ask myself, how seriously do I take God? If I take God serious enough, I would do everything in my power. Not to just be perfect, but at least progress in life. I can't make a lifestyle out of the same sin because that same sin going to lead me to death. That same sin is going to lead me to lead me to depression. It's going to lead me to all these things that I don't want that I don't want it to lead me to. Sex may feel good in a moment, but God didn't intend sex to be outside the covenant of marriage. So my thing is, and I'm saying sex for me, that was my struggle. I will, pra I will preach this, but go back and practice this. And I'm being real with you. I'm being vulnerable because I want y'all to realize that I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. And I had to ask myself the same stuff I'm telling y'all. How serious do you take God? 
do you truly love God? Because when you truly love a person, you won't keep doing the same things to make that person upset. You won't keep doing the same things to make that person feel feel hurt, be hurt. You won't do the same thing to hurt that person's heart. And at the end of the day, sin can separate us from God. And it's like we take God sending his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins for granted. We take that for granted. We, we say it. We say, thank you, Lord. But I think the one prayer that a lot of people have to say, because if you was one of those people, if you are one of those people who repent over and over again for the, for the same sin, I know y'all tired of that. So like I said, ask God, or no, not ask God, but you have to ask yourself, how seriously do you take God? And then... I want y'all to realize that God is love. He's going to forgive. But the one prayer that we all have to, to, to pray, and we have to be real with God, because if we were sorry for doing these sins, we won't keep doing them. We have to ask God or tell God, Lord, I'm sorry for not being sorry. That is going to be the, the realest prayer you will ever pray in 2022 lord i'm sorry for not being sorry i'm sorry god i'm sorry for for going my own way i'm sorry for falling short into these same sins lord i'm sorry for not running from running from my flesh i'm sorry for falling short into my flesh and not and, and not walking into the spirit lord i'm sorry for not being sorry forgive me father god i want to do something different i want to make a different way i want to do different i want to be different I want to be different. I want to be different from my future kids, my future wife, husband. I want to be different. I'm sorry for not being sorry, God. Forgive me. Forgive me for not being sorry. Y'all got to do it, man. <laughs> but, y'all, I truly enjoy it, man. It feels good to be back, baby. It feels good to be back. <laughs> Y'all, it feels so good to be back. Y'all, I truly love y'all. I truly love y'all, man. It feels amazing to be back on this podcast. Y'all, um, since the last time I did the podcast, I was in my mama's crib. Now I'm in my own crib. And I, I don't like it because I can't put nothing on the walls. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Like, I, I want to, like, y'all see, like, that wall right there? That wall right there? Man. Having my guitar painted right there, then that wall right there, having my Jesus painted, my my live symbol, and some other stuff. You, I bet I could have hooked this room up having the LED lights on. The, I, man, I could have hooked this room straight up, bro. But uh, yeah, man, uh, you know landlord things. But it's all good, man. Uh, I love y'all. Hit the like button, subscribe, turn on post notifications, man. Um, I don't normally do this because I I don't want money. And I don't care for money, but I see. I don't now. I'm not even gonna do it because at the end of the day, look, I do this after con. I do this because the Lord called me to do it. You feel me? But I see a lot of people posting their cash app, but I was gonna do it, but I'm not gonna lie, y'all. That's not me. I just don't care for the money. Okay, I don't care. You know, I I, I truly don't care. So I'm not even gonna ask for y'all little little dollars because. I just don't care for it. You know, I, at first I was. I'm not gonna lie, I was. I was like, oh, let me ask a little bit of cash. I see a lot of podcasters doing it. Let me let me go ahead and make a little chunk chunk. But yeah, that I don't do this for money. I don't do this for the views. I do this because God called me to do this and I truly love him and I wanna help and motivate a young person out there to get closer with God. But I love y'all, man. Uh if y'all enjoyed the podcast, hit the like button on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know if I'm posting on, you know, if I do post on music, um, Apple music and all that, I guess it's called rate. Rate me, comment, uh, give me some good advice. You feel me? Uh, I love y'all, man. God bless. Stay blessed. Peace.